Welcome to Millette Hall. I am Sean Wiesman. I'm here for a pregame show. Uh, we have an outstanding matchup today between Miami, the Miami Red Hawks, and the Dayton Flyers. Dayton and Miami have not played since 2009. However, they have Dayton leads the overall series 19 to 16. I mean, they've only played a couple of times since 2000, but I'm glad to see a a Southwest Ohio. Uh, matchup being renewed here as they uh, about to tip off in uh, a little over 20 minutes. Um, we'll get started though with the uh, matchup analysis. So to start we got uh, the Miami Red Hawks who are coached by Glenn Box, a former Indiana assistant who got his first win against Indiana uh, against uh, Xavier rather in a 58 to 57 overtime victory um, November 27th. Uh, since then though Miami has struggled a little bit playing a power five uh, team in Michigan State getting uh, their outscored 89 to 44 and then losing to an Eastern Kentucky a very good Eastern Kentucky team as well uh, 85 to 55 this is a very uh, th this is this is a very young squad um, I mean they are led by grad transfer Jaden Scott uh, from Cincinnati actually just down the just down the road who averages 14 points and five rebounds. Uh, however, he she is their uh, biggest source of offense with uh, no other p p player averaging more than seven. And uh, really just a big loss. Um, Katie, R Katie uh, Richardson is in a boot for today. Uh, she is their second leading scorer, sorry, third leading scorer and second most, uh, second leading rebounder with six points and four and a half rebounds per game. I'll touch on that in a little bit as to why that is so important, but as you can tell just by her rankings on the team, that is a big deal. No other player on the team averages more than seven points a game other than Jaden Scott's 14, and uh, overall the offense has just been a bit of an issue. Um, nobody scored, team hasn't scored more than the 62 points a game, even in a win where they scored, you know, they scored uh, 58, um, and only two players are shooting 40% or higher overall. Um, so offense is, is, is hard, is going to be hard to come by for this, uh, Miami squad. However, um, freshman Lucretia Edwards has, uh, set herself apart. Uh, she's the only player who is shooting more than 33% from the, th uh, from three. And, uh, she has, uh, really, uh, really stood out over the last couple games. Uh, she, in their past three games, she has scored 38 points and they're going to need her to continue to elevate her game against a pretty solid Dayton squad. Um, Miami is projected to finish last in the MAC. Like I said before, very young team, eight newcomers, four graduate transfers, four freshmen, all of whom are starting today with Richardson's absence. Very young, very inexperienced. I think they're still gelling, trying to figure out a little bit who they are as a team. But I'll tell you what, even in the, I've been very impressed, even in games where they've been down 30. This team continues to play hard. They don't roll over by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, I'm excited to see them improve in the coming weeks and in the, the coming years as they continue to mesh and to really improve. Um, there's some very positive signs, even though they only have one win. Uh, it was Glenn Box, Coach Glenn Box's first uh, of his Miami uh, coaching tenure. Um, I mean, they, they beat a Xavier team that while they were – Granted, they were uh, projected to finish last in the conference. Still not an awful team by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and Xavier was even favored in that game, and they pulled it out. Um, they also uh, played a Western Kentucky team who made the women's NIT last year very close for the first half. Uh, they let it get away from them, unfortunately, but it, they've shown that they can compete with just about anybody. It's just about being consistent through all four quarters. So, as I mentioned earlier, we had uh, Katie Richardson in a boot for Miami. Really big loss. She is, she was really important in their win uh, against Xavier, and I'm sure that they will be missing her absence greatly, especially for a Dayton team that relies in on their paint presence, uh, which I will touch on later in the pregame show. The Amber Treader will be uh, tasked with. Um, she will be tasked with filling in for uh, filling in for Richardson, and uh, she's gonna have a whole task on her hands because uh, she is gonna be likely matched up on Ariana Smith um, for Dayton. Uh, 
Dayton is an outstanding rebounding team and led by Ariana Smith, who is third in the country in over averaging 12.1 rebounds per game. She That is an outstandingly difficult matchup, and uh, they're going to have to give it their all in the physicality department today. Dayton overall, though, led by uh, Tamika Williams-Jeter, second-year head coach. Uh, they finished last season 7-21. and 21. Um, Took them 14 games to pick up their first win last year, but uh, better late than never for uh, for Coach Williams Jeter. Um, overall, though, they were picked to finish ninth in the Atlantic 10 poll out of uh, 15 teams. Currently four and five this season, but have lost their last two games to Purdue Power Power Conference team 67 to 59, and then they lost their first Atlantic 10 conference game to Davidson, 81 to 53. They are going to be led, these Flyers are going to be led by grad student Maria Perez, who was named to the third team all-conference preseason, although I anticipate by season's end they'll have at least one other player on there. Per, my guess is Ariana Smith with her third in the country in rebounds. Um, however, this is just a very well-rounded team in terms of scoring. No, no starter has fewer than eight points. Uh, no, there's there are five players with no fewer than uh, nine points, and uh, but nobody has more than eleven point two, and that is Ivy Wolf, former Miami Red Hawk, was here for a couple seasons. She is uh, she's their leading scorer with eleven points, and also their leading assister with three assists per game. And a little fun fact about her is she actually has is the all-time free throw percentage. In, in Miami women's basketball history uh, before her absence. Um, but, yeah, so that'll be a, a nice hometown connection for her uh, as she uh, as she's, uh, starts for the uh, Flyers. Overall, though, I'm, I'm quite excited for this game, and uh, we'll have a lot more un to unpack in the next 15 minutes or so before I kick it to our friends here at Red Hawk Radio uh, for the actual calling of the game. Uh, but in the meantime, I will take a break and get back to you with some scoreboard plus some Miami news.
Hello and uh, welcome back. I'm Sean Wiesman and I'm your host for the pregame uh, show for the matchup between the Miami Redhawks and the Dayton Flyers. Some scoreboard news really quickly. We have some scoreboard though. We have um, on Wednesday we had a bunch of MAC games played. Miami in, in men's basketball. Miami unfortunately lost six eighty four to sixty four. Although they played very, they played them pretty tough. It was a it was an exciting game and exciting to see Miami play a, a, a really good Ohio State team that will likely be in the top 25 uh, come the next poll. Uh, played them well. Um, uh, Central Michigan with a 71-67 to win over Valpo. Uh, we had Ohio taking a 78-72 to loss to over uh, from Youngstown State. Youngstown State a probably one of the best teams in the Horizon League. So not a bad loss by any stretch of the imagination. Ball State barely squeaking by 0 and 9. Detroit Mercy 68 to 65. Ball State 7 and 2 on the season, with uh, only two losses coming to uh, Evansville, a team Miami also lost to, and Little Rock. Uh, so uh, not a bad for the Ball State Cardinals. Um, finally, we got a Toledo getting sneaking a one point win over uh, Oakland from uh, not the Oakland in uh, California, but rather in uh, Michigan, 69 to 68. And it sounds like uh, Oakland took a romp through the MAC as they got a 14.77 to 63 win over Eastern Michigan. That's your men's basketball. Women's basketball Wednesday, we had a uh, UConn who uh, beat uh, not a bad Ball State team, 90 to 63 in women's basketball. That's uh, not a bad uh, Connecticut UConn team by any stretch of the imagination. Eastern Kentucky pulled off a 85-55 to 55 win over our Miami Red Hawks, as I mentioned earlier in the show. Uh, not great, but uh, Jada Scott with uh, 20 points. Uh, Jaden Scott, rather, with 20 points um, in a loss. Um, Toledo with a 23-point win over Michigan. What an outstanding uh, win for the uh, for the Rockets there to get a over a Power 5 team that's uh, only other loss was to a ranked Ole Miss team. So way to represent the MAC. And then Youngstown State with a one-point win over Akron, 53-52, to and a Detroit Mercy squad that beat Western Michigan by 362-59. to In Miami news, we've had several big uh, pieces of news happen over the past week or so. We had uh, Lou, Lou Groza award winner for the first time, Graham Nicholson, who... Uh, one of the greatest kicking seasons in college football history with uh, 25 consecutive made kicks before a miss in the MAC championship game, which, oh yeah, by the way, Miami won. Um, set, yeah, so tied a NCAA record at any level uh, with 25 made kicks in a row, which uh, great job. First MAC kicker to win the Lou Groza Award. First Miami player to win a major award as well. So uh, awesome for Miami as a whole. And uh, congrats to Graham for uh, an outstanding season. Only two missed kicks, and one of them was a blocked extra point. So, uh, yeah, just outstanding work from Graham. And we're also excited to see that after he entered the transfer portal earlier this week that he announced that he is coming back along with uh, leading, receiver, re leading receiver Gage Larvidan, who will likely be – Preseason first team all Mac coming into the season with uh, transfers coming in and out. We also have uh, starting quarterback Brett Gabbard, who uh, has announced that he's coming back after his broken uh, fibula and tibula against uh, in his that 21 to 17 loss against Toledo. Um, really awesome stuff to see a potential first team all Mac quarterback coming back and a potential first team all Mac wide receiver coming back. Uh, we also had pretty much everybody on defense who had eligibility who has announced they're coming back, including le top 10 tackler Matty Salabek, and uh, the entirety of the offensive line has announced that they're going to be back, which is just outstanding news. Um, overall, though, uh, just out, uh, just a great week for uh, Miami Athletics in the uh, football department at the very least, and uh, even uh, though that will be overshadowed by the uh, – transferring of Avion Smith, who was the starter for much of last season and um, the last few games of this season as Gabbard had season-ending injuries in both of those 
seasons. The uh, unfortunately it makes sense. Avion Smith has been has uh, you know 14 games of starting experience, and uh, he's just with Gabry coming back. There's just no real path for him to get any consistent starting experience for him. So, best of luck to Avion, and uh, we're about to tip off here in just a few minutes. And uh, so I'll I'll do a quick matchup preview while we're at it. So to start for Miami. Uh, I would definitely take a look at uh, Madison Hewn and Lucretia Edwards to take the vast majority of the threes and just the shots in general for this uh, Miami squad. Uh, Hoon and uh, Edwards have both taken more than 23 pointers apiece, and nobody has taken else has taken more than nine attempts. Um, look for Miami just to slow the game down a little bit. Uh, just uh, just want to give yourself a chance against a Dayton squad that has averaged 67 points a game at to Miami's 51. Also, you just got to give Jaden Scott some opportunities. She's by far your best offensive player, and overall, you're just going to need to get her involved in this game. On top of that, I'm sure uh, Coach Glenn Box has been emphasizing them, telling them to box out. The uh, Dayton Flyers have been averaging 42 rebounds a game, led by Ariana Smith's third in the country, 12 rebounds a game. So I'm sure there's going to be a big emphasis on that, as Miami only uh, rebounds 30 per game. Uh, on top of that, expect uh, just in general, I would expect Hewn and Edwards to get a ton of touches and shots. I mean, this is a bottom five team in defending the three and uh, just has a real emphasis on the paint. So uh, to kick it over to Dayton, uh, they have a top 15 offensive rebounding team in the country, and they're 51st in rebounding overall. And so just continue to look for them to pound the glass, especially with Richardson out. Um on top of that, they're bottom 30 in three-point attempts. So once again, a very paint-oriented team. And uh, expect them to get Maria Perez, the grad student, preseason third team, all A-10 involved. She had 12 double-doubles last year, and I'm going to look at her as potentially being a double-double candidate this season as she is their best post presence. And uh, just overall, a big source of experience for this, uh, my, this Dayton Flyers team as they uh, – could start up with um, A-10 play more consistently soon. Uh, last thing I would say is just in general, contrast in experience for the Red Hawks and the Flyers. The Red Hawks are going to be starting four freshmen to uh, Dayton's one, and uh, Dayton otherwise is starting all upperclassmen, and um, yeah, it'll be exciting. I'm excited to see this, and I'll kick it over to uh, our friends here at Red Hawk Radio. As we get started, and in the meantime, we will take a break.
everyone, wherever you are, and we thank you so much for tuning in to Miami women's basketball. Today, the Miami Redhawks are taking on the Dayton Flyers, a phenomenal rivalry that has lasted over 30 years. The two teams haven't played each other in quite some time, about 15 years, but this rivalry is back, and it should be a fun one. Starters have been announced for Dayton. Ivy Wolf starting Destiny Bohannon, Ariana Smith, Danica Lightborn, and Mariah Perez. The Miami lineup starts the form. My name is Andrew Robus along with Luke Lewis. Luke, how can the Red Hawks take down the Flyers here today? Well, it all starts with Jaden Scott, Andrew. And they're gonna have to center the game around her tonight. Coming off a 20 game, a 20 point game performance last game. They have to continue to give her the ball with the hot hand. And on the other side of things for the Dayton Flyers, Ariana Smith, they're gonna have to keep an eye on her. She's currently top three in the country in rebounds so far, and averaging close to a double-double. So that's gonna be a player to look out for tonight. More of the starters get announced for Miami. Seems to be going with more of a, a veteran heavy lineup. You don't see Maddie Hoon or Hennessy Lou Brown among other players. It's mainly three veterans and then you got a few kind of inexperienced players. Jaden Scott starting Lacreche Edwards, Amber Treader, Nuria Giorgio from Barcelona, and Corey Lard are your five starters along with Wolf. Bohannon, Smith, Perez, and Lightborn for the Flyers as both teams start to get things ready here for a fun one in Millette Hall. Currently coming into today, the Miami Redhawks are 1-5 and five overall, 0-4 on the road. They've played a ton of <laughs> road games to start the year, but they're 1-1 one one at home with their only win being at home versus the Xavier Musketeers. And for the Dayton Flyers, 4-5 and five overall, 0-1 in the conference that lost to Davidson most recently. 0-3 on the road. That's something to keep an eye on for the Red Hawks. And we shall see if the Red Hawks can pick up their second win of the year. It would also be their second home win for the new season. Dayton Flyers wearing their blue jerseys with the red five number and the white Dayton across the chest. And for the Miami Red Hawks, the white home jerseys with the cursive Miami font. And they got the red numbers along with the white shorts and the crossed shorts with the red lining on them. The Red Hawks and the Flyers set to have things going here in Millette Hall in just a moment. Uh, Ariana Smith is set to tip it away, and for the Red Hawks, it is Scott, Jaden Scott, set to tip it away. This tip is tapped away on Dayton's side and won by the Flyers, and they'll take it the other way. Lightborn hands it off to w Ivy Wolf, the Miami transfer. Gives back over to Lightborn. Lightborn takes things at the top, passes high inside to Smith. Smith looking around, finds her man over there, goes over and finds on the far side, searching for trouble there in traffic. That was Maria Perez trying to get a shot, but she was corralled by two Red Hawks. Phenomenal defense there. It's going to be a turnover for the Flyers. That's good defense there to start the game there, Andrew. Red Hawks inbounding on the right. They're going left to right here. See how what the Red Hawks can do. Nuria Juro has the ball here. The freshman from Barcelona, phenomenal player. Passes short to Corey Lard, then hands it over to Lucretia Edwards, a phenomenal freshman. Here's Giorgio on the far side. Shot clock now at 10. Amber Treader passes inside to Scott. Scott, reverse layup, it's good. And the Red Hawks lead 2 to nothing here, 9.05 in the first quarter. But the Flyers come the other way quickly. Passing inside here, phenomenal pass here is Maria Perez. Tough shot, hits the back iron and it's out of bounds. We'll see which side it goes. It's rebounded initially there by Destiny Bohannon, wearing number 53 today. And they're gonna say out of bounds Bohannon. So Red Hawk basketball here. Miami doing a good job off the board so far. That's gonna be the key to the game today. It's Corey Lard handling things here on the Red Hawks timeline. Natalie Giorgio on the far side, passes far over to Lard. Lard skipping, guarding Ivy Wolf. That's gonna be a tough matchup all game long. Short pass inside to Jaden Scott. This will be a fun matchup. Tough layup by Scott, it is short. That ball pinballed off of Joan, or excuse me, 
Smith's hands, and then it went off of Scott's hands. So it's out of bounds, Red Hawks, and the Flyers will take things over here. Ivy Wolf, the conductor of the offense here, controlling tempo here. Passes top of the key. That is Ariana Smith. Passes inside short. It is Perez to Smith, and Smith with a swift layup ties the game up. 2 2, Miami Dayton. 8 04 left to go in the first. Right now we see Scott on Perez. Be curious to see if they switch over to Smith as the game goes on. Nuria Giorgio handling things here, and they're going to say travel. Good defensive possession there for the Flyers, and that turnover forced by Danica Lightborn making another one of the starts for the Flyers. She's been a good player for Williams' squad, trying to make an impact here against the Crosstown rival Miami Redhawks. Ivy Wolf guarded against Kari Lard heavily. Dayton Flyers try a three, it's good. Danica Lightborn gets the green light from three, and she gives the Flyers a 5-2 lead. And hold up, we got a little trouble here for the Red Hawks. Turnover on the inbound, and the Flyers will get it right back here. They're gonna have to limit those mistakes here, Andrew. With players like Ivy Wolf making plays like that, driving the lane and kicking it out. She's gonna be doing that all day. Miami's gonna have to tighten up here. So it's Flyer basketball once more after a miscommunication on the inbound, and looks like it's gonna be a personal foul on Ariana Smith. A little bit too physical there for one of the Red Hawks. So once more, it's gonna be Miami basketball with 7.34 left to go in the first. Red Hawks inbounding here. That was Lucretia Edwards. Passes chest high over to Corey Lard. Corey Lard on the near side, hands it off once more to Lucretia Edwards. Phenomenal freshman performer for Glenn Box's squad. Gives it back once more to Lard. Inside, here come the Red Hawks. Jaden Scott trying to get an easy layup. A little floater shot makes it count. It's 4-5 Miami. Jaden Scott leading the offense once more. High pass and a ton of traffic. Nuria Giorgio just kind of sprung on the opportunity there to attack Ariana Smith, I believe. And they're going to say it's a foul on Giorgio. Looks like we'll keep it here. Back to that basket on the other end by Scott there. Bohannon was trying to cheat a little bit and got burned by Scott. Lightborn on the near side corner. Passes high over to Smith. Smith goes in the corner for Bohannon. Bohannon cashes in for three. Just like that, the Dayton Flyers lead eight to four. Already two threes and shooting the three ball well here. A chilly afternoon in Millette Hall. Corey Lard drives inside, tries a mid-range J, step back, it is good. Corey Lard showing off that veteranosity. Gets the lead cut by Dayton, six to eight now. 6.31 left to go. Passes inside, here come the Dayton Flyers. A little bank shot, that one will not fall by Maria Perez, and here come the Red Hawks quickly the other way. Couple possessions of frantic basketball. We'll see if the Red Hawks or the Flyers decide to slow it down here. Noria Giorgio skipping along, trying to find the pass, finds Corey Lard, and then passes up top for Jaden Scott. Jaden Scott pulls up from the mid-range jumper, and Smith was right there. Rebound for the Flyers. Missed pass there from Danica Lightborn. She was looking for Destiny Bohannon, and that one was out of bounds on Giorgio, so it's gonna be an inbound pass. Ivy Wolf. Wolf played for Miami the past two years. She transferred out after Deanna Hendricks was taken out of Miami women's basketball team and she's trying to make her presence known for the Miami faithful. Here is Bohannon, guarded pretty toughly by Giorgio. Passes far side there, that is Smith. Finds Bohannon on the corner, near side corner. That one will not fall. Great perimeter defense there for the Red Hawks. That was Giorgio presses her up phenomenally. And it'll be Miami basketball with 5.31 left to go, 6-8. Dayton leads. Miami doing a good job containing the box under the rim. The rebounders Dayton has, that's got to be an area they can dominate on the floor today. Lisa Jones in for the Flyers. Corey Lard controlling things for the Red Hawks. Passes closely to Lucretia Edwards, and this pass is intercepted here by Anisha Jones. Off to the races, tries 
the near side and layup, it is good. And the Dayton Flyers lead six to 10 here. We're about midway through the first quarter of action between the Flyers and the Red Hawks. Maria Giorgio, the freshman from Barcelona, Spain, trying to create a shot against Ivy Wolf. She's a good defender and she forces the miss there on the Red Hawks side. This three by the Flyers in and out. That was Anissa Jones trying her luck against Amber Shredder, who made the game-winning shot against the Xavier Musketeers a few nights ago. Amber Trenner, top of the key, passes inside. That is Jada Scott, the twin of Jaden Scott, and she turns the ball over there. Here come the Flyers the other way. Ivy Wolf is crafty as ever, and they're gonna say travel after Ivy Wolf passed it over to Ariana Smith, and one too many steps there for the Flyers. So we will step away here for the media timeout of the first quarter. Dayton Flyers lead 10 to six in a really fast paced first quarter in Millet Hall. You're listening to Miami Women's Basketball here on Red Hawk Radio. My name is Andrew Ruffles alongside Luke Lewis. So glad you could spend your Saturday afternoon with us. Welcome you back to Red Hawk Radio for the presentation of Miami Women's Basketball. The Red Hawks trail 6-10 here, about four and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. Andrew Rubis alongside Luke Lewis. Luke, what have you liked from the Red Hawks and the Flyers here? It's a pretty hectic first half of the first quarter, but what have you liked from both sides in this game so far? Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. Well, on the Miami side of things, they gotta do a better job defending the three-point shot. Wondering if that's what Glenn Box is talking about in his team huddle right there. On the offensive side of things, Corey Lard, we saw a very beautiful mid-range floater from her. That is her game. We got to continue to see shots from her in that mid-range area. And they got to get Jaden Scott and Lucretia Edwards going a little bit more. We like to see Jaden Scott drive the hoop. That is her strength at that 6-2 frame. But as of now, 10-6 lead for Dayton. Miami very much in this one to start. We'll see how it goes from here. Now in terms of shooting the Dayton Flyers, they've taken more shots. They've controlled the rebounding really well. And it's going to be pretty easy to control rebounding when you have a top three rebounder in the country, Ariana Smith. Luke Lewis touched on it a little bit, but she's averaging 12 rebounds so far. And she's already made her presence known with an early board on tap. So the Red Hawks will control the basketball here. So they try to cut into this Dayton Flyer lead. Six to 10 is our score. And Nuria Giorgio, the freshman from Barcelona, loses it for a moment, but she'll control it here for the Red Hawks. Tipped ball. This one is taken away by Jones. It was a bad pass from Giorgio. Looking for Lard, and Jones is right there to pounce the turnover. And it'll be Dayton basketball once more. That's a good hand by Dayton player there. Miami's gonna have to sharpen up their passes going forward. Here's Ivy Wolf, who passes high on the top of the key. 
That is Shannon Wheeler. Little shifty mid-range jumper there. That one is good from Nao Lear, the veteran for the Dayton Flyers. The score is 6-12, Dayton on top. Little miscommunication there, looking for, I believe, Maddie Hoon, the Carlsbad kid, but she finds Corey Lard instead. Corey Lard pressed heavily against Ivy Wolf. She passes once more to Maddie Hoon. This pass is intercepted here. A couple of errant turnovers leads to an easy bucket for a moment, and that one is shanked by Shannon Wheeler, and the Red Hawks get lucky there. The score remains 6-12 to 12 here, about 3 minutes and 20 left to go. That's a lucky break there for Miami on that fast one. Here's Nuria Giorgio. She's been in the game for a large majority of the time. She's been pretty effective, but got to limit those turnovers. Finds Jaden Scott, but they're going to say Jaden Scott went one too many steps of travel for the Miami Red Hawks there, and it'll be Dayton basketball once more. Good idea by Jada Scott there. Drive the rim. I'd like to see her continue to do that going forward. Far pass over. She found, I believe, Anissa Jones in the corner, and she was searching for Smith under the cup, but... That one went off of her hands. A ton of turnovers here early. A total of 10 turnovers, seven for the Red Hawks and three for the Flyers. That's gonna be the game plan for the Dayton Flyers. How can they frustrate this young Miami unit? Nuria Giorgio nearly broke Nao Lear's ankles, but this one is turned over once more by the Red Hawks. Giorgio tries to defend the fast break layup. It goes in for Nao Lear. And the Dayton Flyers lead 6 to 14. They increase their lead ever more. Dayton on a 6-0 lead here, 6-0 run rather, in the past four minutes. Doing well. Nao Lear, Nuria Giorgio, very crafty guard against Nao Lear. And that one went in and out very close to the cup, but it goes Dayton's way. Lear got the board. Lear tries a mid-range J, guarded heavily against Nuria Giorgio there. It's not good there. It'll be Miami basketball once more. A couple of missed possessions here. We'll see which side can turn it around. That was Jordan Tuff, the veteran who was hurt all of last year. She was driving in very close to the cup. She was fouled right away there by Wheeler, I believe. Back in the game here, Andrew comes uh, with Rich Edwards. And Rich Edwards, so. A little bit more size here for Miami. Rather Treader than Richardson. Gonna do a, have to do a better job in the offensive boards. They're doing a good job on the de defensive side of things, rebound wise, but a little more size here up front for Klein Box's squad. Jordan Tough at the free throw line, nails both of them, and the score is 14 to eight. Dayton leads. No Katie Richardson, she was in a boot before the pregame. So the Red Hawks will be down one of their starters. They're trying to cycle in a ton of Red Hawks here and we've seen that early. And another Dayton turnover there. That was another travel on Anissa Jones. We've seen a ton of turnovers and we're up to 12 now. A lot of travels too. Very rec style basketball here on display in Millette Hall. Giorgio controlling things, guarded against Lear, very shifty. Passes close to Amber Treader. Gives it right back over to Giorgio. Giorgio driving inside on the right side. That pass is blocked, blocked once more by the Dayton Flyers, but Red Hawks get it once more. Back-to-back -back rebounds and back-to-back -back blocks for the Flyers. Giorgio controlling things, shot clock winding down. Four, three, two, one, nice layup there by Nuria Giorgio. Cuts the lead to four against Dayton. Bit of a Euro step move there through the middle. Jones tries a mid-range J, it is good. And that extends the Dayton lead, 16 to 10. That was a little mid-range jumper on the near side. Bread and butter for the Dayton veteran. We're under a minute here for the Red Hawks. We'll see what they can do here. Jordan Tough passes to Giorgio. She tries a three, it is good. Nuria Giorgio, the freshman from Barcelona, Spain, continues to punish this Dayton defense. The score's 13 to 16, and a fun one. Passing inside here, finding Lear. 
on the near side, and this one is a turnover. Here come the Red Hawks off to the races. Lucretia Edwards tries a close layup there. Chaos on the basketball court, but this is gonna be Dayton basketball for the moment, and it's gonna be Miami basketball, so absolute pandemonium between the Red Hawks and the Flyers, but it's gonna be Miami basketball here, 13 to 16 with about 14 seconds. So we'll see what the Red Hawks draw up here with the final possession likely in the first quarter. Giorgio controlling things here, guarded heavily against Jones. Three seconds, two seconds, find Scott inside, try to get the close layup, it is not good. And the Dayton Flyers escape the first quarter with a 16 to 13 lead here to end things in the first quarter. Luke, what did you like from the Miami Redhawks as they kind of rally back in the closing minutes of the first quarter? Well, it all starts with Maria Giorgio. You saw her getting very confident with the ball at the top of the key. Some nice handles and confident looking three. All right, fans, right now. It's going to have to run through her for Miami to be successful. And you saw the very last play of the quarter there, getting it down to Jaden Scott. They got to get her going in the paint. But Miami looking pretty good so far. Good hands all around. And we saw a uh, bad Dayton turnover here at the end of the first quarter, all caused by hard offensive rebounding and hustle by Miami. So they just got to keep the energy up. I'm sure Glenn Box is talking to his squad right now, telling them that they're right with the Dayton Flyers in this one. We'll see if they can keep things going going into the second quarter. We will take a break here in a very fast-filled, turnover-heavy, but very entertaining basketball game here from Millette Hall. The Dayton Flyers lead 16 to 13 here, and we will be back for the second quarter momentarily. You're listening to Miami Women's Basketball here on Red Hawk Radio. We welcome you back to Millette Hall for hopefully a fun-filled second quarter between the Miami Redhawks and the Dayton Flyers. I'm Andrew Elvis alongside Luke Lewis. Scores 16 to 13, Dayton leads, and Miami will have it moving from left to right. Nuria Giorgio guarded against Ivy Wolf. Wolf spent the past two years with the Redhawks. She was third team All-Mac last year. Phenomenal sophomore season for her. Corey Lard corralled. She was doubled there by the Flyers, and here come the Flyers zipping off across the court. Here. Trying to get one down to Jaden Scott there. Good idea, but couldn't execute. Tough shot there by Anissa Jones. She was doubled there. Two Redhawks right in her face. I believe it was Scott and Giorgio, but she 
nailed it, and the score is 18 to 13, Dayton on top. Largest lead of the game for the Flyers was six, so it's been a relatively close one here. Nuria Giorgio showing off a ton of speed there, gets a nice far side of the layup to fall down for the Red Hawks. It's 15-18, and here come the Flyers quickly the other way. It's Bohannon 4-3, it is good. Destiny Bohannon showing off the range from three, extends the Dayton lead 21 to 15. That was a far side three from Destiny Bohannon, who has been in this Dayton system for quite some time. Not bad defense there by Miami. I mean, it was a contested shot, just a well-executed shot from Bohannon. Corey Lard nearly got a tough mid-range jumper to go. Pressed heavily there from Jones. Goes in and out, and here come the Flyers on the opposite side. Flyers try a three here, it's good. Ariana Smith showing off the range there. One of the top rebounders in the nation getting it done from deep as well. The score is 24 to 15, back-to-back -back threes for the Flyers. They are flying away here. We'll see if the Red Hawks can swoop back in and make this one closer. Finds Corey Lard, Lucretia Edwards to Lard on the near side, near wing and Scott is pickpocketed there by Bohannon. Two on one for the Flyers. The near side of the layup, Anisha Jones gets it to go against Giorgio. The score is 26 to 15, Dayton on top. Dayton's just winning in the transition right now. Miami's gotta be a little more careful with the ball on the offensive side of things. Amber Treader tries her luck from three on the nearby elbow, it is good. The score is 18 to 26. Red Hawks and the Flyers trading threes here in the second quarter. Ivy Wolf on the near side, finding Smith. Good pass over on the corner, and it is good. Anisha Jones from three. That's three straight three-point balls from the Dayton Flyers, or three-point, three straight threes in the quarter. They're doing a great job. The score is 29 to 18. In the second. Dayton's feeling it right now on the offensive side of things. Miami's got to contain the three ball if they want to narrow the lead in this one. Dayton Flyers, they're, they're playing a really tough Atlantic 10 conference. It's going to be tough for the Red Hawks to compete with them, but they're doing a pretty good job here. Finding Amber Treader inside, that was Scott and the score is cut now. It's 20 to 29, Dayton leads. Here come the Flyers the other way and Maria Perez putting her name on the scoring column for the Flyers. Gets a nearby layup to go. And here come the Flyers once more. Ivy Wolf nearly had a shot there but was blocked by Corey Lard. Giorgio for three, no. That one missed badly and the score remains 31 to 20. Dayton on top of Miami. Some really chaotic possessions so far. We'll see if either side wants to slow it down a little bit, but if you love scoring, this is a game you really want to tune into. Absolutely, a lot of turnovers on both sides resulting in some fast breaks here, so we'll see if they can slow it down. Wolf commanding the offense, hands it off to Smith, and Red Hawks force another turnover there in traffic. Here comes Nuria Giorgio. Nice bounce pass inside, what a feed inside to Treader, who gets a nearby layup on the far side. The score is 22 to 31, Dayton on top. About six minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Giorgio pressing against Ivy Wolf, who drives inside on the near side. Flyers want to try a three, that one will not fall. Danica Lightborn missed on the far window, and the Red Hawks will control it on the opposite timeline. Maria Giorgio trying to cement some minutes, gets a nice jumper. She had some separation off of Ivy Wolf, but she cannot cash in on the easy mid-range J. So here come the Flyers. Scores 22 to 31. Ivy Wolf is gonna try a prayer of a three there from the parking lot. This one. That one didn't touch rim. Miami students calling air ball, trying to get in the head of Ivy Wolf, who we keep mentioning it, she was a great player for the Red Hawks last year after she 
announced their decision to transfer to Dayton in the offseason. So, so far she's 0 for 2, hasn't made a shot, but she's dished the ball out well. Two assists so far, and that's what she's really known for. Absolutely, Jerger doing a great job on Wolf right now. She's out of the game for now, so we'll see if they can contain her. Lucretia Edwards tried uh, three from the near elbow. That one fell short, and the Flyers corral on the offensive end. Here come the Dayton Flyers trying to fight inside. That was a shot by Evie Fiala. That one fell short, and the Red Hawks will control it on the other side. 31 to 22 is our score. Another Aaron pass. And another turnover for the Miami Red Hawks. Danica Lightborn controlling things on the near side. Drives and a snatch steal there from Lightborn there. Here come the Red Hawks. Lucretia Edwards nearly had a block and a point, but that one will fall short, and the Flyers will have things on the other side once more. 22 to 31, four minutes and 11 seconds left to go in the second quarter in a game that has really been a boat race between these two teams. We got Lard on Wolf now. Lard on Wolf, Wolf driving inside and getting a tough basket to fall. That's her first of the game. And she quiets this Miami Red Hawks faithful for the moment. 33 to 22 is our score. Three minutes and 45 left to go in the second. Corey Lard pressured heavily there against Lightborn. Lard in trouble, trying to pivot, trying to find a teammate, and she finds Lucretia Edwards there. Lucretia Edwards on the near side. Tough shot there. She was falling down, and she kind of threw up a little prayer there. It'll be a foul, and she will be shooting two momentarily. That's a good idea from Edwards there with the shot clock winding down. Great job drawing the foul. So we will step away here in a real fun second quarter. The score is 33 to 22, about three minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the second. As a reminder, it'll be Sean Wiseman, the halftime show, who'll break down everything from the Miami Redhawks this game and the Dayton Flyers as well as scores from across the country and much more. Don't make, make sure to not miss that one and we will have that in a few moments. You're listening to Miami Women's Basketball here on Red Hawk Radio. Thanks so much for tuning in.
Welcome back to Millette Hall. Our score is 33 to 22. I'm Andrew Elvis alongside Luke Lewis. Luke, this has been a really fast paced and high scoring affair. What have you liked from the Red Hawks? You know, it's been a ton of turnovers. We have 19 total and it's only in the second quarter. What have you liked from the Red Hawks so far? Well, the Red Hawks are doing a better job getting to the rim here. Creating fouls as we see the Chris Edward get to one right now. They're doing a good job on the offensive board. We see Maria Giorgio back in the game. She's been doing a great job containing Ivy Wolf, only with the two points. So we would like to see that keep going. Edwards misses the first one and hit the back iron and hit the front. Never really had a chance, but she sinks the second one. Score is 23 to 33. Dayton leads by 10. Maria back on Giorgio. Or sorry, Giorgio back on Scott. Flyers are gonna try a three. That is Riley Riss Miller. And the Dayton Flyers are really flying on the three-point shot. They are doing a great job and really pulling away here against the Red Hawks. 26 to sorry, 36 to 23 is our score about a little under three minutes left to go in the second quarter. Maria Giorgio under pressure there, finds Scott on the near side. She was fouled closely by Jones and it'll be two shots for Jada Scott, the twin of Jaden Scott. That is her game down there. She's going to have to continue to draw fouls under the hoop. So Scott will Go to the line, she's a pretty reliable free throw shooter. Red Hawks are gonna need these shots to fall if they wanna catch up to the Dayton Flyers. Sinks the first shot, 24 to 36 now. And she sinks the second one, so Jada Scott, perfect from the line there for the Red Hawks. Cuts the lead to 11 now, 25 to 36, and a platoon swap here for Miami Red Hawks, they bring in Jade Inscott and Amber Treader, Lucretia Edwards, and they decide to keep Giorgio in, but they also sub in Hennessy Lou Brown. First moments we're gonna see of her. That was an Aaron pass on the far side. Shannon Wheeler searching for, I believe it was Jones or Smith, hard to tell, but either way, it's a turnover on the Dayton side, and Miami will control things here with 2.36 left to go in the second quarter. Maria Giorgio finds Hennessy Lou Brown on the near elbow. Pressured heavily, finds Jaden Scott guarded against Ivy Wolf there on the near corner. Finds Giorgio on near the top corner. And it'll be Lucretia Edwards who tries a three from the top stripe and it'll be, I believe a jump ball. So it's gonna be Dayton basketball here. 2.11 left to go in the second. We saw a different matchup from Giorgio. Wolf was not on it there. The shot clock was winding down. Edwards fired a three. Pretty good shot. Miami's gonna have to get it going earlier in the possession. Two minutes and change left to go here in the second quarter. Dayton Flyers trying to extend their lead even more. A nice layup there almost went in by Destiny Bohannon. Great defense from the Red Hawks on the fork side. And looks like it's gonna be Miami basketball. I believe it was Anisha Jones who was trying to fight for that rebound, but she touched it last, so it'll be Red Hawks basketball with one minute and 57 seconds left to go in the second quarter. They're doing a good job containing Arena Smith. Ariana Smith, rather. Off the glass, we know that's her strength. They're gonna have to continue to do that. Flyers are forcing a ton of turnovers, especially on Nuria Giorgio. She's kind of been the de facto point guard for the Red Hawks today. And nearly another turnover on the Red Hawks side. Jaden Scott tried a mid-range jumper, that one fell short, and the Flyers will have it on the opposite side. Good look there on the inbound. Anissa Jones tries a three on the far elbow. This one missed, and it'll be Red Hawk basketball touched top rim. 
and bounced harmlessly to the floor. So good job. Sorry, sorry, Andrew. Uh, that's a good job boxing out there by Jaden Scott on Ariana Smith, as I mentioned before. Minute 20 now left to go in the second quarter. The Red Hawks down by 11. They're trying to cut this into single digits. We'll see if they can do so. Nuria Giorgio, freshman phenom from Barcelona, trying to cut into this lead for the Dayton Flyers. And she had a kicked ball. It's going to be a kicked ball on Anisha Jones. So it'll be Red Hawks basketball with a fresh shot clock and a little over a minute left to go. A minute eight more specifically, and Hennessy Lou Brown passing in on the far sideline. Now we enter in under the minute timeline. Shot clock winding down, Nuria Giorgio trying to create something for the Red Hawks, and they're gonna call jumped ball on the Flyers there. That was some great pressure inside, right under the cup by Anisha Jones there. And it'll be another Red Hawk turnover. Dayton Flyers are doing a great job at forcing those turnovers. In total, the Red Hawks have 13 in the first half. Got to clean that up if you want to take down the Flyers here. About 45 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Here's Destiny Bohannon controlling things. Finds Jones on the far elbow. Passes near corner for Bohannon. Here is Smith finds Ivy Wolf on the top. She is pressed heavily there by Lou Brown, and there will be a foul to the dismay of the Miami coaching side. Ivy Wolf's ability to drive the lane and, and kick it out, putting Miami back on their heels. She draws a foul there. Ivy Wolf, she, during her time in Miami, she was just such a crafty player. She's those players you love to have on your team where you just don't know what you're gonna do if you're the defense, and she's really making the Red Hawks guess here. 25-36 is our score. Shot clock still on for the Flyers. Let's see if they can get one more to extend their lead. Finds Destiny Bohannon on the near elbow. Shot clock winding down. Bohannon tries a three in and out, hit the back iron and out. Lou Brown, four seconds, three seconds, and they're gonna say a foul on Ivy Wolf. Blocking foul on Ivy Wolf there. So blocking foul with 3.8 seconds left to go here. We'll see if the Red Hawks can drop a last second shot here to cut the lead into single digits. 36 to 25 is our score. 308 in the second remaining. Let's see if they go back to Scott, they do. Lou Brown finds Scott who had a nearby mid-range jumper, and that one fell short. So our score will remain 25 to 36 at the half. A really fast-paced, but really entertaining first half of basketball between the Dayton Flyers. And for the Red Hawks, they committed a ton of turnovers, 13 turnovers in total. The Red Hawks also forced a turnover, ton of turnovers on the Dayton side, eight turnovers, but now, despite it being a messy one, it's been a real fun one to watch in Millet Hall. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of that quarter there, we saw Hennessy Lou Brown take on Ivy Wolf. She did a good job staying with her. And we will see in the third quarter if they go back to that or they put back Maria Giorgio. We'd like to see Giorgio get going again. She had the hot hand early in this one. We'd like to see her with the ball. As well as Jaden Scott, we saw an inbound pass just moments ago that worked earlier in the game. A good play drawn up by Glenn Box's squad. In the second half, they're gonna have to limit Ivy Wolf. They're gonna have to continue to limit her. They're doing a good job. However, she is driving the lane and kicking it out for some wide open threes. So Miami will have to contain the three ball as they did very nicely in the last moments of that second quarter. It should be a fun one as we approach the second half. That's gonna do it for us. We're gonna hand it over to Sean Wiesman, who will take it over here from the halftime show. The score is 36 to 25. We'll see if the Red Hawks can make some adjustments. Sean, it's all yours. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, exciting, but a little bit disappointing for the Red Hawks as they come to an 11 point deficit at the half. It is 36-25 Flyers and uh, just, ugh, 
a lot of turnovers. Just not a fun start for the Red Hawks in that regard. And uh, I'll tell you, when you when when Dayton's able to steal the ball ten times, you make it really hard for to win games for yourself. Really, really hard. I I'd also like to speak to the fact that there weren't a lot of fouls in terms, and so it really was just giving the ball away. It it was disappointing to see. Uh, how often, especially Zhirja, she was she was outstanding offensively uh, when she wasn't turning the ball over, but she uh, unfortunately turned the ball over quite a bit. Uh, overall, though, it was not a bad game offensively for the uh, for the Flyers. Uh, however, for the Red Hawks, obviously, uh, not cannot say the same. Uh, leading scorer, though, for the uh, for the Flyers was um, leading scorer for the Flyers. Who was the leading scorer for the Flyers? Lead score for the Flyers was uh, Anissa Jones with 11 points, and then the nobody else had more than six with Destiny Bohannon having that six. But just a very well-rounded effort from the uh, Dayton squad. Uh, same deal with uh, Miami, very well-rounded. Nobody else with more than seven, both Amber Treader and uh, Nuria Zhirzhao, each with seven apiece. Nobody else with more than three. That's got to change. They're going to have to get some more people involved. Uh, you cannot have Jaden Scott with two points. Um, that uh, she's just gonna have to shoot the ball better. She's one for six. Nuria Zhirzhao uh, made a, made an a important three earlier in the in the half, but uh, unfortunately, and she's only three for eight. She's also gonna have to get going. The, uh, and the Red Hawks as a whole are gonna have to uh, improve their shooting as they are nine for twenty-five. Uh, unfortunately, as well, just like I said before, just a lot of turnovers. But I mean, it was a both sides thing. Nineteen combined turnovers. Thirteen on thirteen. Um, Dayton forced six that Miami forced, and just. Ugly, ugly basketball, but my goodness, I love ugly basketball, so uh, that's great news. Um, overall, though, just a quick summary of the game. So, I mean, early on, it, it really was just I, I thought that the lack of interior presence would really hurt the uh, hurt the Flyers, or hurt the Red Hawks, rather, and it didn't early, but it seemed that Glenn Box's game plan very obviously was to box everyone out as quickly as they possibly could and play the paint as quickly as they possibly could. And that meant that they were giving up anything and everything within the 15 feet, 15 foot mark uh, back. Uh, and, and that resulted in several threes and it let Dayton get on the board pretty quickly. 14 to six, just two and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, just really, really, unfor really just uh, Unfortunate on both sides of the ball, um, and just 12 turnovers overall in the first eight minutes. So yeah, it was, it was quite the, quite the game. So, um, like I said before, uh, this and also because they were giving them free reign from three point land, and Dayton was taking adva taking advantage. It, it was really disheartening to see a team that's shooting 27 percent from three shoot four for six in their first 12 minutes of the game and and, and as a result uh 29 to 18 was the score with seven minutes left in the second quarter um eventually uh it, it became clear that just points off turnovers were just going to be the key for today i mean fast break points uh dayton leads on court points dayton leads bench points dayton leads i mean it really is just just offensively dayton is just really, really uh, outdoing everything that Miami uh, is able to do. Defensively, Miami's doing okay, but offensively, like I, I mentioned previously, they just have really, really struggled to get anything going consistently. Um, and just, like I said, eight when you have eight steals in the first 15 minutes of play, you you can't expect to get any sort of offensive consistency. Um, just, like I said, kind of an ugly game, but you know what? It's very possible they just have to to win this game, they just have to keep. Uh, they have to shoot a little better and uh, continue to uh, not let the the Flyers get the pull as many rebounds. Because Miami's done a really good job in that regard. They are both they are tied in rebounds, 16 to 16, and that's obviously been a point of emphasis for Glenn Box and his squad. Uh, anyways, so uh, we'll get to the scoreboard in just a minute. Um, conference championship sh conference championship week was this past week with uh, some exciting stuff uh, happening, including the Miami, our very own Miami Red Hawks sn scoring a 23 to 14 win over a Toledo Rockets squad that had won 11 straight games coming into that game. 
Quarterback uh, Daquan Finn for Toledo, actually, who is Mac Player of the Year, uh, actually has decided to enter the transfer portal for Toledo. So that is big Mac news, as has Mo Ohio's uh, Mac 2022 Mac Player of the Year. Uh, Curtis O'Rourke has also decided to uh, enter the transfer portal. So it looks like Miami certainly shaping up to be the favorite for the Mac Championship. Uh, on top of that, we had um, so obviously we had some controversy uh, in the college football playoff as uh, Florida State was left out despite being an undefeated ACC champion, uh, which was uh, I know Knowles fans very disappointed about that despite the loss of uh, Jordan Travis, their star quarterback, who was fifth in Heisman voting. Um, Alabama was able to sneak in uh, after a 27-24 win over Georgia uh, as with the four seed. Texas was able to win. Uh, their conference championship over Oklahoma, destroying them, uh, beating, uh, winning 49 to uh, 21. Liberty was able to beat uh, New Mexico State 49 to 35 on Friday, uh, this past Friday, um, in the uh, conference USA championship. They have the Group of Five bid and will play Oregon in the uh, in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, uh, not the Fiesta Bowl, rather the. Uh, uh, oh, you know, it is the Fiesta Bowl. Um, anyways, they have uh, a really good uh, chance to make a statement as they are undefeated currently. And uh, I look forward to seeing Liberty represent the group of five in the college football playoff. We have about seven minutes until tip, and I'll take a quick break, give you a little bit more uh, matchup analysis of the first half, and then uh, I will kick it to my friends over in Red Hawk Radio.
Hi, I'm Sean Wiesman. I'm your host of uh, the Halftime Show here at uh, Red Hawk Radio. And uh, we have some scoreboard updates for you in uh, NCAA men's basketball. UConn is absolutely destroying Arkansas Pine Bluff uh, in HBCU, uh, 96 to 55, with about four minutes left in the second. UConn uh, one loss this season and looking very much like national championship contenders a year after winning the national championship. Uh, once again, you have Illinois uh, in Tennessee competing. Uh, Tennessee is up 12. That is a, a little bit of an upset, in my opinion, considering Tennessee has three losses. Illinois has one, even though, yes, Tennessee played an absolutely brutal three-game stretch of North Carolina, Kansas, and Purdue. Still, impressive. this would be an impressive win for uh, Tennessee as Illinois just came off of an, uh, 11, a, a nine-point win over Florida Atlantic and an 18-point win over Rutgers. Uh, and their only loss is a seven-point loss to Marquette, a top-five team. Alabama and Purdue playing in the Hall of Fame series in Toronto with uh, Purdue uh, uh, down seven or five minutes into the first half. Um, Alabama, obviously not quite uh, the top-ten team that they were last year with losses to Clemson and Ohio State, which sounds more like a college football uh, problem than it would be a college basketball problem. But regardless... Alabama's playing uh, Purdue early. Purdue also having uh, their only loss this season coming in a uh, a really shocking loss. A big upset to Northwestern, a team who beat them last season in a giant upset. Um, really cool to see uh, Northwestern uh, do well in basketball after <laughs> struggling for pretty much the entirety of their existence in college basketball. Um that's it for uh, top 25 schools right now playing. We have a few other schools coming. Pretty much every top 25 school uh, is playing uh, now. And uh, actually, Kentucky got a solid win over a uh, the Ivy League Penn school. Uh, Kentucky was uh, w managed to pull off a 15-point victory in at Penn in Philadelphia at the Wells Fargo Center, 81-66. Uh, to 66. We have an exciting slate later today, though. We have uh, a couple more regional games, including the second half of the uh, Hall of Fame series, uh, Clemson versus TCU. Uh, Clemson is ranked in 8-0, which is uh, good for them. And uh, they actually look better than their basketball team, which uh, is imp felt impossible to say. We're about 50 seconds left until the tip-off. I'm going to kick it back to my friends uh, here at Red Hawk Radio in just a second. But before I go, I just wanted to let you all know that uh, we have hockey later tonight um, with uh, Luke West Pauly on the call, and uh, I'd love it if you guys could join us. Uh, the game, I believe, is at 7.30. And, um, yeah, I'll kick it to you guys. We've got tip-off in about 30 seconds. Uh, uh, second half starts in about 30 seconds. I'll tip it off to you guys. Thank you, Sean. We're back here for second-half action between the Red Hawks and the Flyers. The score is 36-25, and... This will hopefully be a half for the Red Hawks where they can limit those turnovers. They have 13 so far and try and start out the first or the second half really fast. You got to get on a run here if you want to take a bite into the State Flyers lead. Andrew Elvis alongside Luke Lewis. And Luke, this has been a fast paced race from start to finish, but hopefully a little stoppage and a little bit more slow of a game here. We'll see which type of basketball we get here from Millette Hall. Yeah, absolutely. Miami's going to have to slow down the game here a little bit, losing the battle in the transition. We see very good battles between Naria Giorgio and Wolf here. Wolf doing a good job driving the lane and kicking it out. Bohannon's another person Miami's going to have to watch shooting 50% from, from the three-point line. And then on, on the Miami side of things, Treader's doing a great job winning her battles below the rim. Between her and Giorgio, they're going to have to get this Miami squad going. Here come the Red Hawks moving right from the left. Amber Treader on the far corner, under trouble with Bohannon, and finds Treader on top. Here is Scott driving inside, showing off her strength, and she catches in with a nice close layup. The score is 27 to 36. Scott starting things off hot for the Red Hawks. Exactly what Miami needs. Here's Bohannon, top of the key near the giant red M of the Miami Red Hawks logo. Finds Wolf, top of the corner. And she goes back to Bohannon on the right side. Here on the right corner, she finds Lightborn, and she passes very close inside over to Mariah Perez. 
Back-to-back -back layups on both sides. The score remains an 11-point lead here for the Dayton Flyers, 38 to 27. Trading baskets between those counterparts. That's a matchup we're gonna have to look out for here in the second half. Here's Corey Lard near the free throw line. She finds Edwards on the top of the key and then goes right back over to Giorgio on the right side. Nice pass inside. That is Treader. Scott tries a tough mid-range J. Defended heavily there from Perez, but she cashes in. The score is 29 to 38. Red Hawks back out in front. It's a Scott versus Perez battle to start the second half here, Andrew. Scott and Perez really making their presence known there and almost got that one to count there for the Dayton Flyers. It was a shot that Nearly should have made, but it'll be two free throws upcoming for Mariah Perez. Nice feed inside to her. Scores nine-point lead here, 38-29. to 29. Dayton on top, but, you know, one thing the Red Hawks can't do, they can't foul early because those will pile up. Absolutely. Both teams trying to work the ball down low, draw fouls. It's working so far for both squads as Perez steps to the line here for two. Perez's first is good. That extends the lead to 10 now for the Flyers. Perez, a 78% free throw shooter entering today. She sinks both of them. It's 40 to 29 now. The lead is back up to 11 for the Dayton Flyers. Red Hawks inbounding. That is Lucretia Edwards, and she goes to Nur Nuria Giorgio on the far side. Pressured heavily there, that was Jones. The leading scorer so far for the Flyers with 11. Lard finds a good pass inside to Giorgio. Phenomenal pass in traffic and she misses the first one but she grabs her own rebound and keeps the possession alive for the Red Hawks. Giorgio goes reverse layup, nearly had that shot to fall but she is fouled and she will have a stab at the free throw line for two shots upcoming. Just a great effort by Giorgio there. First a great move to cut to the middle, and then Genesius off the glass, drawing that foul. Giorgio's first free throw shot is clean. Scores cut to 10, 30 to 40 now. About seven minutes and 53 seconds left to go in the third. Second shot was short initially, but got the lucky bounce there and eventually cashed in. The lead is now back to nine for the Dayton Flyers, 40 to 31 as we continue here in Millette Hall. Got some full court pressure there. Ivy Wolf tries a deep three from the parking lot and she misses badly, but right under the basket, that was Ariana Smith who corrals another rebound and it's gonna be a foul on one of the Red Hawks. So possession will be Dayton once more. I have a fresh shot clock momentarily. We've seen Wolf try that long three multiple times now. We'll see if she gets away from that and gets back to her strength, driving the ball to the hoop and kicking it out to her counterparts. Pass down inside on the baseline, finds Jones on top. Jones trying to find Bohannon and she does on the far elbow. Shot clock winding down, eight seconds, seven seconds. Here's Bohannon, can she get this shot to fall? Great defense from the Red Hawks, close inside. And it looks like it touched the Red Hawk last. Maybe Lucretia Edwards or Corey Lard, either way. It will remain with the Dayton Flyers. And with that, a fresh new shot clock for Dayton. That was Bohannon. She was looking to find, I believe that was Shannon Wheeler but the pass actually hit off the backboard, so it'll be a turnover on Dayton. Miami will take it the other way. Full court pressure there by Dayton forces another turnover. Lucretia Edwards, she was looking for Corey Lard, but another turnover, and if Dayton scores here, a costly turnover at that, that this is something you can't have, especially only down by nine. Make a three here, it's a two possession game. You gotta lock in if you're Miami. 7.22 left to go, Ivy Wolf inbounding on the far baseline, and she goes to Bohannon on the near elbow. Here comes the Flyers once more. It is Ariana Smith driving inside, finds Jones on the far corner, and they're gonna say blocking foul on 
Nuria Giorgio. So I'm curious what they saw there. I saw a very good defense by Giorgio with her hands up. Probably just move in a little too much in the paint. Jones is one of those players who, if you go into the paint, barbecue chicken alert, she's going to get those fouls to add up eventually, and that's exactly what she did there. First free throw, luckily for Miami, misses from Smith. Jones, rather, I apologize for that one. Second one, she's good. So good redemption there from Anisha Jones. The score extends to 10 for Dayton, 41 to 31. Red Hawks, we'll see if they can go on a little run here. Corey Gillard pressured heavily from Ivy Wolf. And she finds Lucretia Edwards close by on her right. This pass, bounce a little bit. Ivy Tough. Wolf almost forces another turnover. And the finger roll there from Jaden Scott is good. She's been so good from inside. She cuts the lead to eight. Now 33 to 41. Red Hawks trying to cut back. Here's Jones, a little pickpocket there from Corey Large, showing off the great court vision there. It's a good hand there. And it'll stay with the Dayton Flyers here. See if the Red Hawks can force an empty possession here on the Dayton side. Ivy Wolf on the four corner. Nice little Euro step, and she cashes in for two right in the basket, very close on the far side. The score is 43 to 33 now. Flyers on top once more by 10. Corey Lard driving in with a head full of steam, and she connects from inside the old fashioned layup. The score is an eight point lead for Dean, 35 to 43. Ivy Wolf draws a foul from Corey Lard, who applied too much pressure there. Yeah, Large checking out of the game right now. A great battle with her and Wolf as Wolf also checks out of the game. Trading back buckets on each side of the rim. Wolf showing off her, her speed there, driving the rim with an excellent finish. Those two out of the game right now. More big presence on the court for both teams. So Nao Lear is in for Dayton. She had the inbound pass there and she turns this one over. Here come the Red Hawks off to the races. Three on. Two there, she finds Amber Treader. Apologize, Nuria Giorgio down low. Red Hawks gotta cash in here. Finds Jaden Scott, and Jaden Scott connects for two. Another layup. She's been all over in the painted area all game long, and she punishes the Flyers there dearly. 37 to 43. Big block in the middle there. Should have been a foul. It is not, and the Flyers will control things here. Nao Lear. Finds Jones on the near corner. Flyers are gonna try a three, that is Ariana Smith. Won't go, hit the back rim and out. And the Red Hawks are racing down here. The Flyers lead by six, but the Red Hawks wanna cut this one even more. About five minutes left to go in the second quarter. Red Hawks trying to slow this one down. Amber Treader on the near elbow, finds Tennessee Lou Brown, passes down low to Jaden Scott. Jaden Scott driving inside, trying to make a nice Little shot, couple spin moves here and there, and she connects. What a move there. She pivoted one, two, three, and she cashes in for two. The Red Hawks are now down by four. Flyers try a three. Destiny Bohannon, it is good, and that extends the Dayton lead to seven, 46 to 39. That three was money from Destiny Bohannon on the near corner. Three for five from three for Destiny Bohannon. For Destiny Bohan, and this is her fourth year at Dayton. She was voted team MVP last year. They're certainly seeing why here. They're making a crucial bu bucket to extend the lead for Dayton. So we will take a break here in a very fun-filled third quarter. We expected this coming into tonight's game, and it is definitely not disappointed. The Red Hawks trail by 7, 46 to 39 is our score. And we will be back momentarily. You're listening to Miami Women's Basketball here on Red Hawk Radio. My name is Andrew Elvis alongside Luke Lewis. Thanks so much.
welcome back to Millette Hall. Andrew Rovis alongside Luke Lewis now. Luke, Miami, they kind of gave up a few baskets early, but they're on a little bit of a run here. And how can the Red Hawks sustain this little rally in Millette Hall? Yeah, narrowing the lead to only seven for Dayton. It all starts up front with Jaden Scott. We knew coming into this game, she was going to be the factor for Miami to get the Red Hawks going. And she's using her strengths to her advantage under the rim. You saw at the beginning of the game, trying a lot of midway, mid-range jumpers, wasn't going for her. Getting back to her game now, using her big six foot two frame under the hoop and winning her battles against Perez. Now we also got the battle between Giorgio and Wolf. We saw them exit the game briefly there. We'll see after the timeout if they return. Both great playmakers on Miami and Dayton. That'll get the squads going. And we saw Brown, Lou Brown, Hennessy Lou Brown in the game there for a little bit, showing a lot of tenacious hustle. More of that out of Miami. And lastly, coming into this game, we knew the Red Hawks were gonna have to look out for Ariana Smith. Of course, top three in the country in rebounds. I think Amber Trudder is doing a great job containing her, staying with her today. And that's a matchup that Miami's gonna continue to have to win if they want to win this game here today. Couldn't agree more there, Luke. And in terms of rebounding, Ariana Smith leads the day for the Dayton Flyers with four total rebounds. It's certainly not up to her standards that she's been averaging, averaging 12 currently, but four rebounds. Red Hawks doing a good job containing her. And for Ivy Wolf as well, only four points in total. Last game against Davidson, she shot 1-4-11. So definitely containing her well. Nuria Giorgio on the charity stripe here. Missed the first one. Hit the back iron. Too strong there. We'll have a second. And she misses the second one. Miami's going to have to hit their free throws. It's a close game. Got to make those shots pretty much free points. That's why they call them free throws. Here come the Dayton Flyers. Nice pass inside. What a feed there to Smith. That was a, I believe that was a nutmeg from Ivy Wolf there, showing off the incredible vision that she's displayed all season long for the Flyers and especially last year. Scores 48 to 39 after a nice layup from Smith. Nine point lead once more for the Dayton Flyers. Red Hawks trying to cut into this one. Hennessy Lou Brown, top of the key. See Wolf on Brown right now. That's a matchup that is very quick between the two. Both showcasing their speed and skill. Amber Treader too strong there, but drove in nicely on the near side. Picks up her own board, does the work herself, and she connects for a two-point layup. 41 to 48 is our score. Dayton leads by seven. Tough mid-range J from Danica Lightborn, and Lightborn got the green light there. Lead back up to nine for the Flyers. 50 to 41 now, and we have some Quick pressure there from Lightborn after she made a tough shot. And full court pressure foul. there by Dayton. They are not taking this nine point lead for granted here, keeping the pressure up on Miami. Miami's gonna have to get the ball out of their hands quick and transition down the floor effectively. I've seen it all game long. It's really been the Dayton Flyers. They just pressure the ball so well. And you know, the Red Hawks, they had 14, 13 turnovers entering halftime, only one so far. The Red Hawks have done a great job of limiting those in. That's why it's only a nine point lead for Dayton. Shredder, top of the key, finds Lucretia Edwards on her left. Gives it back over to Lard on the far side. And there is Giorgio, finds Shredder on the near corner and goes back to Giorgio. Giorgio crafty as ever, trying to find her own shot. Giorgio shifting left to right, finds Scott driving in, trying to find the right shot. Jaden Scott, wet like water there from the inside painted area. She connects for two, 43 to 50 is our score. About two minutes and 45 left to go in the second. Here's Ivy Wolf, crafty as ever, keeps saying it, but she really is. She's got a phenomenal look for the basket and she is fouled right under the cup. Miami's gonna have to watch the fouls here as they shift into the bonus. On the other side of things, we saw another great basket by Jaden Scott with the hot hand. The Red Hawks are gonna continue to have to feed her the ball. 
now just a seven point game. Here's Ivy Wolf. First free throw is good for her. Last year from the free throw line, she shot a very special 90% from the line. That was actually a school record. The previous one was 89 and she actually had that record as a freshman. So she's perfect from the free throw line as a career shooter and she connects for both 43 to 52 is our score, dating back up by nine. Can't foul Wolf inside. Hennessy Lou Brown showing off the speed with the offhanded layup. Cuts the lead back to 7 4. Dayton 45 to 52 is our score. A little over two minutes left to go. Here's Dayton on the other side. That is Smith, Ariana Smith on the near elbow. Ivy Wolf head down low, but driving to the basket. That one will not fall. And I think that's on the floor. Looks like it will stay on the floor, so it'll be Dayton basketball, but Red Hawks got to do a, a lot better job at kind of limiting Ivy Wolf inside the paint because once she's in the paint, that's when she's deadly. Absolutely. Hennessy Lou Brown doing a good job on the perimeter defense there, forcing Wolf to throw up. Not a great shot. Got to be better rebounding there for Miami, as we saw Ariana Smith make her presence known again. So Smith makes the first shot. 53 to 45 is our score now. 53% free throw shooter. And she misses the second one. Ton of bodies are on the floor. And looks like it's gonna go to Miami. Last touch by a flyer there, but that pressure once more, you know, you gotta get the board, yeah. A little grimace by Lou Brown there as she checks out of the game. She looks to be okay. Good rest for her right now. And to see Lou Brown, she's been all over the basketball. She's one of those players that Glenn Box loves. That's why she didn't really play a lot in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, we plugged her in. Really scrappy player. 45 to 53 is our score. A little over two minutes, a little under two minutes left to go in the third quarter. Pass nearly intercepted there by Nisha Jones. Shown off the great poise there. It'll stay with the Red Hawks, however, with 15 seconds left to go on the shot clock. One box looking for a foul there on Wolf as she has been defending right up to Lard as of now. Giorgio. Passing inbound, finds Treader nearby. Hands it off to Giorgio once more. Giorgio tries a three, it's good. Nuria Giorgio has been all over the court today. She's been making those buckets count when they need them most and the Red Hawks only trail by five now. Big shot from big shot Nuria Giorgio. You can see the excitement on her face after hitting that one. We'll see if she will keep asking for the ball with the hot hand here down the stretch. 118 left to go, finds Smith for three. Sorry, Jones on the corner, and they're gonna say jumped ball. So, you know, it's only a 48 to 53 game, but this one, you know, early on it felt like Dayton was leading by 20. They didn't actually lead by 20, but the amount of turnovers that Dayton forced, it certainly felt like that. It's only a five point game here, and the Red Hawks, if they get a stop and a score, can cut it to a single possession. Nice pass inside, and that is good for Shannon Wheeler, who gets an easy layup up and close. 55 to 48 is our score now. Red Hawks trying to continue to apply pressure against the Dayton Flyers. Under a minute here left to go. What can the Red Hawks do? Lucretia Edwards passes close to Jada Scott, twin of Jaden. Nuria Giorgio showing off the craftiness nearly got that bucket to score for the N1, but she will take a trip to the free throw line for two. Giorgio is uh, absolutely feeling it right now. You can see the confidence driving the ball with the Euro step there. She missed both free throws last time to the line. Hopefully she can knock them down now and cut the lead down to five with just 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter here. The 60% free throw shooter, you gotta make them here and she misses another one, so three in a row. Can't have it for the Red Hawks. This is 
close of a game as you want against your crosstown rival, and she misses another one. So not feeling from the free throw line for Naria Giorgio as of now. Four straight misses for Giorgio from the charity strife. Ivy Wolf tries a mid-range jumper, hit front iron, but a rebounded there by Jones. Jones tries a tough mid-range jumper. It is good right in the face of Amber Treader. Jones shrugs it off and he takes those for, for the veteran from the Dayton Flyers. 57 to 48 is our score. 14 seconds left to go. Shot clock is dark. That was Lucretia Edwards who's blocked by Riss Miller. And the Dayton Flyers will have the last possession here. Five seconds, four seconds. Ivy Wolf trying to find a shot. Three seconds, two seconds, one. Tries a three, it's good. A three from Shannon Wheeler to end it gives Dayton a 12 point lead. So not too long ago, the Red Hawks only trailed by five, but a few missed shots and a clutch three from Wheeler there makes it a 12 point lead here with 10 minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Glenn Box could not be happy with that one. With the time winding down in the quarter, you cannot allow Dayton to extend the lead, which they just did to 12 now going into the fourth quarter. We shall see what adjustments need to be made for the Miami Red Hawks, who they only trailed by five not too long ago, but It'll be an uphill climb. We'll see if they can do so here in Millette Hall. You're listening to Miami Women's Basketball. The score is 60 to 48. Dayton leads. We will step away for just a moment. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be back momentarily. Well, here we go, fourth quarter action for the Red Hawks and the Flyers. Dayton leads 60 to 48. This has been a fun one. The rivalry definitely has picked up right where we left off and Flyers and the Red Hawks only separated by 40 miles. These two schools, a lot of history. We'll see which one ends up on top. Lucretia Edwards for the Red Hawks. Tried a three there, missed it, and the Dayton Flyers will control it on the opposite end, moving left to right. Yeah, I don't think that's the shot that Miami wants out of Edwards from the top of the key contested. We'll see if they can move the ball around a little more. Alicia Jones circling around finds 
Bohannon on the near corner, finds Bohannon. Jones to Bohannon for three, won't go. Red Hawks fought for a rebound there. Nuria Giorgio once more. Great vision, gets the board to fall. Similar shot there for J.E. that we saw out of Miami. We'll see if they, both teams get back to getting the ball down low in the paint and drawing fouls. Corey Lard on the floor corner. She finds Giorgio near the Miami logo half court side. Giorgio fighting against Wheeler here. Giorgio tries a three. This one won't go, hit the far rim there and rattled out and Dayton will control it on the opposite end. Nothing really going offensively for Miami out of the break. See if they can get back to their game. That was working for them during the third quarter. And hold up here, we got a monster block there from Jaden Scott. She denied Wheeler, who's trying to get a little floater layup there. It'll stay with Dayton here, but some phenomenal defensive pressure from the Cincinnati veteran. Cincinnati transfer also, she spent four years prior before coming to Miami. And hold up, we got a foul here. Offensive foul. It'll be an offensive foul on, I believe, Bohannon, Destiny Bohannon. The Red Hawks will have the basketball here in just a second. With these kind of fouls here, it feels like you almost got to get some points on the transition. You're down by 12, but time is now a factor. A little over eight minutes left to go here in the fourth. Plenty of time here though for Miami. I would like to see them get back to driving the basketball rather than chucking up these long threes that are contested. It was Lard finding Wheeler or Giorgio. Giorgio nearly got the layup to fall. A little bit too much muster on that one, but the Red Hawks rebounded on the offensive end. Lucretia Edwards on the four corner trying to drive in. Here is Corey Lard driving down with a head full of steam. Nice pass inside to Giorgio inside the paint. Here's Giorgio tries a little floater. This one won't fall too far on the left side. And Dayton in transition nearly had a good pass over to Wheeler, but turnover for the Flyers. It'll be Red Hawks basketball once more. That's another fast break turnover by Dayton. We've seen a few stretch passes go away. Let's see if Miami can capitalize here. Turnover from Anisha Jones. So here we go. Same story as the last possession. Red Hawks trail by 12. Seven minutes and 30 left to go. Corey Lard for three. No. That one hit front iron and the Flyers rebound it. Destiny Bohannon grabs the board. Passing down low to Wheeler. Wheeler pushing around. Finds Wolf on the corner for three. Halfway home in and out. Rossweiler there for the offensive board. Almost got it to go down, but three Red Hawks are right there, and they force a lot of pressure, missed shot, and it'll stay here with 18 seconds left to go on the shot clock. Too many open shots here for Dayton, as we saw Ivy Wolf, not a player you want to leave alone in the corner. And an offensive re rebound by Dayton. No buckets have been scored here, and Right on cue there, announcers jinx. Ivy Wolf cashes in for three. The score's 63 to 48. We almost went three minutes without a bucket being scored in. Just gotta keep my mouth shut on those ones. There we go, Giorgio down the lane. She misses a layup and she's been pretty cold as of late. But great rebound there and she pickpockets a flyer there to force a turnover. Here come the Red Hawks on the opposite end. Lucretia Edwards, nice pass inside, finds Treader, and Treader is denied by Ross Willer. Riley, I apologize, Riley Riss Miller. She forces that out of bounds, but she's been a real force for the Flyers. Riss Miller and Wheeler check out of the game. Two big bodies for Dayton. Let's see if Miami can capitalize in the paint. Riss Miller standing at 6-4. Mid-range jumper for Amp. Amber Treader, it's good on the far side. That cuts the lead to 13 for the Dayton Flyers. So 63 to 50 is our score. The Red Hawks trail by a bunch. We'll see if the Red Hawks can draw some things up and get a little rally like they did in the third quarter. You're listening to Miami Women's Basketball here on Red Hawk Radio. My name is Andrew Elvis alongside Luke Lewis. So glad you could spend your Saturday afternoon with us. We'll be back in just one moment. Thanks so much.
quarterback here in Millette Hall. The score is 63 to 50. And a real fun rivalry matchup between the Red Hawks and the Flyers. Luke, how can the Red Hawks force a last quarter run here and pretty much try and steal a W against the Dayton Flyers? Well, Andrew, like I said earlier, they're gonna have to stick to their game plan. There's still enough time in this one not to be chucking up long threes here. We'd like to see Jaden Scott get more involved as we saw in the third quarter. But high intensity, high pressure is what Miami's gonna have to do. Force, first turn, force turnovers and fouls. And Maria Giorgio, obviously, is gonna have to get the ball in her hands. Flyers are inbounding. The Red Hawks are forcing a ton of pressure here, trying to force away a few passes here. Ivy Wolf tries a three on the near corner and she connects from three. Ivy Wolf has definitely been heating up and kind of as I mentioned, a cold night from Ivy Wolf. She's really been heating up. It's just a matter of time. Absolutely. Already two threes in the quarter. We'll see if she continues to shoot the hot hand from deep. The Red Hawks trail by 16. 66 to 50 is our score now. Nuria Giorgio driving inside. Nice reverse layup and man oh man, that is not an easy shot to make by any means. But she connects, cuts the lead to 14, 52, 66 now. Wire finish there by Giorgio for sure. Yeah, Giorgio showing a lot of poison. Gotta mention she's only a freshman. Freshman from overseas as well from Barcelona. Here come the Flyers on the other end and almost got that one to fall down. That was Mariah Perez. Haven't called her name a ton, but it's a foul on the Red Hawks. I believe that's on the ground there, Andrew. So it'll be Dayton basketball here, but see what they decide to do here. Fresh 20 for the Flyers. They lead by 14. Ivy Wolf finds Lightborn on the far corner. She drives inside. She goes over to Smith. And then she goes to Perez on the inside half. And she connects for a close near sided layup. The score goes 68 52. Flyers lead by 16 once more. And Flyers are, I believe, doing a 3 2 zone here against the Red Hawks. Giorgio and Wolf, the matchup to look out for. Giorgio versus Wolf. We've seen it all game long. Phenomenal matchup. She goes to Hennessy Lou Brown. I believe there's a, a foul near the basket. It'll stay with Miami here. Take that back. It'll be, I believe, a, a media timeout. And it is. So we will take a break here. 440 left to go in the fourth quarter. Red Hawks are going to have to have a red hot rally if they want to come back and win this one versus the Dayton Flyers. We will step away here. And we'll see what the Red Hawks can do against the Flyers. You're listening to Miami Women's Basketball here on Red Hawk Radio. Thanks so much for tuning in.
We're back here in Millette Hall. Scores 68 to 52 in a game that's slowly but surely coming down to what could be a fun finish. Dayton versus Miami. Keep talking about it. It's been a real fun rivalry throughout the years. Red Hawks actually are trailing in the all-time series 16 to 13 in 29 matchups. Miami versus Dayton, the first matchup in the rivalry in 14 years, actually. It took a, a little bit of a pause. Last game was in 2009, but they pick it up right here, and this game is absolutely delivered. It's been a fun finish to some local teams that don't like each other too much. We saw Miami lose some battles off the offensive boards. That's really been the difference down the stretch that they have lost the grass of this one, trailing by 16 with 440 left. Dayton Flyers are gonna be inbounding it here. Or I apologize, my, the Miami Redhawks will be. It's Lucretia Edwards and he finds Jaden Scott on the top of the key. Here's Scott driving on the far side and this pass is read perfectly there from Danica Lightborn read it like a book called their librarian right there. Phenomenal turnover forced. And Dayton will have it on the offensive end once more. Kind of just a careless pass there by Scott. As she nope, just her just checks out of the game as of now. Miami's going to have to find something a little desperate here. Just over four minutes remaining in this game to claw their way back. 15 turnovers for Miami, 13 for the Flyers. For the Flyers, although they've had turnovers, they've cleaned it up on the offensive boards and they've cashed in for a ton of second second chance points. This pass gets away and Giorgio finds Hennessy Lou Brown on the other side and a costly foul for the Flyers. It was, I believe that was Lightborn who's looking for Saija Cleveland or one of the other players we haven't really called today. Either way though, turnover for the Flyers and Miami will be inbounding it on their baseline once more. Here's Amber Treader trying to take advantage of this smaller mismatch and she does not cash in for two. That one went in and out and the Flyers We'll control it here. 3.55 left to go in the fourth quarter. Dayton leads by a bunch. Bohannon, open again. Bohannon tries a three, it's good. And Destiny Bohannon explodes the lead here for Dayton. That, that one actually was a two. I guess she was a few feet inside. So 70 to 52 now, largest lead of the game for the Dayton Flyers. Three for six from behind the arc for Bohannon today. She has really made her mark on this one. And you know, as crazy as it sounds, the Red Hawks, they were only down by five to pretty much close out the third quarter. Amber Treader tries her luck from mid-range J, does not go. One rattled off the top of the rim and the Dayton Flyers will hold it here. It's only a five point game at the end of the third quarter. The Red Hawks kind of let up and this has been the story. Dayton Flyers unrelentless from three-point land. Lightborn controlling things. She goes over to Ivy Wolf. Wolf, nice shoulder pass. Shot clock winding down. And they're gonna say travel for the Flyers on Ariana Smith. So it'll be Miami basketball with just over, just under three minutes left to go in the fourth. That's been a fun matchup all day today, Treader versus Smith. Treader's fared pretty well against Smith today. As Smith checks out of the game right now. So here is Matty Hoon in for Treader. And we also have Riley Neal in here for the Red Hawks. Down by 18, we'll see if the Red Hawks can cap a little rally here. Hennessy Lou Brown driving inside. Phenomenal head full of steam there. She gets the bucket and the foul and she will be at the line to shoot one for the and one chance. Great move there by Brown. You saw all day out of her and Giorgio. Tenacious, hard work, getting to the rim, good things happen. 
54-70 is our score here. Lou Brown trying to get the and one. Lou Brown's free throw hit back iron and missed, but it was actually a rebounded there by Cleveland and went out of bounds. Missed opportunity there from the Flyers. So Red Hawks will control it on the opposite end. Feels like he gotta score some points here on this possession. 54-70 is our score. Lou Brown trying to survey the offense. Finds Amber Treader inside. Treader pump fake one, pump fake two blocked by, I believe that was, I that was Fiala. Eva, Eve Fiala got the rebound there and the Dayton Flyers are gonna hold this one here. Try and find the right shot. For three there, won't go. Saija Cleveland coming off the bench here. Missed it, and here come the Red Hawks. 54-70 is our score. Two minutes left to go. Amber Treader tries a deep three, and it's good. Amber Treader showing off the range from deep right away from the parking lot. Score is now a 13-point lead here for the Red Hawks. A little under two minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Treader goes up to 14 points with that one, tied with Giorgio and Scott for the team lead today. And Cleveland forces, they're gonna say a blocking foul, I believe, so it'll stay with Dayton. Hard foul there. No, it's See if Treader's okay as she checks out of the game right now. It's actually an offensive foul, apologize for that one. So it'll be Miami basketball here, down by 13, a minute and 37 seconds left to go here. We'll see what the Red Hawks continue to do here with the second unit in. And I see Lou Brown trying to create something here for the Red Hawks. Jada Scott inside. Cleveland commits the foul there. And the Red Hawks will have it here on the other side. Good effort there by Scott as she heads to the line. Free throws have definitely been the Achilles heel of the Red Hawks today not making the ones they needed to down the stretch. And as Scott lines up for two. Red Hawks are, they were seven for 13 before that shot. Now they're eight for 14. You gotta make those shots if Giorgio makes them. This one can definitely be a different ending. And Scott goes one for one at the line. Scores 58 to 70 now with one minute and 15 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Ivy Wolf trying to put the finishing touches on a phenomenal game here for the Dayton Flyers against her old team in the Miami Red Hawks. Minute left to go here in the fourth. Wolf has it on the far elbow. Three seconds spinning away, swerving, nearly got that one to fall. She comes up empty here and here come the Red Hawks on the offensive end. Here is Jordan Tuff, the veteran from last year. And she gives it over to Riley Neal before a foul is committed on the far elbow. Eve Fiala commits the foul there. And the Red Hawks are shooting free throws. Jada Scott set to go. Destiny Bohannon checking in to ensure a W for the Dayton Flyers. I believe this one is out of reach for the Red Hawks. Trailing by 12 with just 42 seconds left of the game. It was close there for a while, but this one stretching out of the hands of Miami. And for Glenn Box's squad, he put together a really tough out of conference slate as Scott makes both of those free throws. It's now a 10 point game, but a tough out of conference slate. It's been some good tests for the Red Hawks. And another close one, but Done a good job against a very tough team. Flyers try a three, and that is good from that was Kozlava. Kozlava. As, back at, as backups start to check into the game with just 20 seconds remaining. So Kozlava makes the three, makes it 73 to 60. Jada Scott tries a mid-range jumper, tough pressure there, rebounded by Lou Brown. 10 seconds left to go, here come the Red Hawks. Jada Scott driving inside, this one is blocked, and the Flyers are gonna hold this one. And what will do it for them? What was a phenomenal road win for the Dayton Flyers. They take down their crosstown rivals, the Miami Red Hawks, a 
rivalry that's only separated by 40 miles. The Dayton Flyers take this round from the Red Hawks. And you know, this was a game that Ivy Wolf and the entire Dayton Flyers team really wanted to win. And Ivy Wolf got a revenge against their former team. The Dayton Flyers, they win 73 to 60 in what was a real fun matchup from start to finish. Luke, what did you think of the Red Hawks effort throughout the game in this one? Well, we saw in the third quarter them narrow the gap to just five points. They were winning off the boards, and that was the key to the game. Giorgio was getting going with the hot hand. However, a couple of crucial missed free throws was the difference in this one, as it was just a matter of time before the Miami transfer, Ivy Wolf, got going, knocking down back-to-back -back threes. And it was just too much for the Red Hawks to climb back in this one. Good games out of Scott, Treader, and Giorgio, though all tallying 14 points, with Treader doing a good job off the boards, holding her own against Ariana Smith, one of the nation's top rebounders. A lot to work off of today for the Red Hawks, a lot to build off of some positives in the game, but they just have to keep their foot on the gas for the full four quarters if they're gonna wanna win in their next matchup today. Tomorrow, rather. Perfectly said there, Luke, and yeah, it's a uh, game from start to finish. If the Red Hawks play things differently, they most likely will win this one, but they fall to their rivals. The Dayton Flyers, they will pick things up here in a week from today versus the Michigan Wolverines on the road. The Wolverines are a great team in the Big Ten, and the Red Hawks are going to have a tough test ahead of them in Ann Arbor a week from today. Well, that's going to do it here from Luke and I, the Red Hawks fall to the Dayton Flyers 73 to 60 in an Ivy Wolf revenge game where she gets the, the lucky end of the stick there against the Red Hawks and it was a fun one. I will head it over to Sean Wiesman for our post game break. Sean, it's all yours. Thanks Andrew, um, just another Tough game for the Red Hawks, but uh, a lot to a lot of moral victories, if you can say that. Uh, they they did a really good job of uh, containing uh, Ariana Smith, who uh, like like uh, Andrew was saying previously was uh, one of the leading rebounders in the entire country. They only she only had five rebounds. On top of that, uh, nobody actually had more than six on the uh, for the Flyers, and uh, they they competed for the majority of the game in rebound. They, they were neck and neck in the majority of the game for rebounds. It really wasn't until the final quarter, uh, where um, it really it, the, the, the the second half rather it really wasn't until the second half when the uh, physicality and the size of Dayton uh, on the boards really started to catch up to uh, the Red Hawks. Um, outstanding third quarter for the for the Red Hawks though. Uh, just uh, 23 points in the third, uh, but wasn't quite enough. I mean, they got it down to a seven-point game, but uh, as evidenced by the final score, and it was up to point. It was up to 18 at one point. Uh, the lead for the Flyers. Uh, it never really got back into into uh, close range there. Uh, really, like I said, it's just about four quarters. Unfortunately, that th it's just been some inconsistency, and I think that's kind of what you would expect from a team with so many new faces, both freshmen and just transfers. You just kind of get that. It takes a little while to mesh and stuff like that. And sometimes, sometimes it's just the way it is. But uh, really, just unfortunately, just not a lot of consistency offensively, especially. Um, only three people for Miami had more than five points uh, for the game. Uh, and that's after getting a bunch of different people minutes. I mean, they had, uh, by my count, they had ten different, nine different people uh, enter the game for them. Uh, just got to improve. I mean, Scott, Treader, and Giorgio did a great job, and they uh, and Treader and Giorgio hit uh, four of their five threes, but uh, just not a lot of consistency at all offensively from anybody else. And you really would hope to, you really hope to see that. But uh, you know what? Like I said, this is just a, it's a young team. You just got to get give them some time. Give them a give them a little uh, chance to mesh and some uh, more time to get a little s more seasoning, so to speak. So, um, unfortunately, as well, it w like uh, Andrew said previously, it was in fact the Ivy Wolf revenge game. She did had an outstanding game. She uh, she really uh, did a great job uh, after being held for so long by uh, Nuria Giorgio. Uh, 
she ended uh she ended up with uh 12 points despite the fact that she was uh really really uh hampered early on by Giorgio's intensity and tenacity um just a, it's a tough game, but you know what? That's a good. That's not a bad Dayton team by any stretch of the imagination. That's a team that'll likely finish in the middle of an a, of a pretty solid A10 conference, uh, Atlantic 10 conference, and uh, I definitely can see this as a, a a good stepping stone for sure for uh, Coach Box's team. That's all for here for uh, here at Millet Hall. Thanks for listening. I'm Sean Weisman. We uh, are going to be back. Uh, for some hockey later tonight, we'd really appreciate it if you could su if you could uh, listen to that. Luke West Pauly on and the play by play for that. And uh, with that, that is it for us. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll catch you next time.